Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here. Good afternoon to everyone out there. Good evening, good morning, depending on where you're at here on this fine Thursday. Straight up noon here along the West Coast in California, July 25th, 2024. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.9 continued swarming going on there across the big island of, of Hawaii. Watching the uh, volcano, of course, which has not erupted yet. We'll get to the uh, earthquake activity here in just a minute. There's a live look there around the upper east rift zone of Kilauea Volcano. All looks well at the surface areas. Beautiful blue sky out there. A few high clouds in the uh, in the distance. Let's go ahead and check out uh, the latest activity here from the USGS in regards to this volcano. Now the update here is still at a yellow and advisory. Um, as of today... This update, though, was put out from yesterday, so it doesn't look like anything new has happened in terms of any significant increase, but uh, definitely still a lot of earthquake activity. Let me show you guys these seismograph stations as we zoom in here just a little bit. There's Kilauea Volcano. Uh, the swarm pattern that I've noticed here today in these earthquakes have migrated back northwestward a little bit, a little bit closer to the, the uh, Lava Lake area in the crater region. Yesterday, we've seen that huge swarm of activity centered right about here. Now, it looks like it's migrated a little bit to the northwest. Not a big deal. I still think we're going to see an eruption here within that area uh, very soon. Uh, seismograph station here, as you can see, past 12 hours, quite a bit. Uh, more so in this area than yesterday. That's why it's showing up a little bit more stronger, a little bit more earthquake activity centered around this region here to the northwest of where we've seen the activity yesterday which was right in, right around here so let's check out the seismograph station here real quick and see what we got past 24 hours there there's that fairly large event from yesterday a pretty significant increase in earthquake activity but over the course of 24 hours you can see it's come and gone and uh, looks like it's picking up again overall in this same area uh, just just a matter of time I feel uh, I can only imagine how many earthquakes have kicked up in here over the past few days uh, yesterday's statement here from the USGS stated that there was uh, about a thousand earthquakes here in the last three days look at that in the upper east rift zone that is crazy that's a lot of earthquake activity that means there's a lot of stuff going on below the surface here that we need to watch as far as the tilt meter goes, well, let's check out the deformation data here. Overall at the summit region, still going down. That's crazy, but it makes sense because we've seen that magma intrusion a little bit, little bit further away from the summit area off to the upper east rift zone. And that's why we lost volume of magma from the summit. And now we're seeing that earthquake activity here in this area. And if you look at this tilt meter, See if I can get it to key up here. Sometimes it wants to be a little fishy. Uh, it's gone up. Since we lost that volume of magma from the surface, uh, or uh, from the um, summit area, it's gone up here on this side. So, uh, And it really hasn't gone down. We're getting a little bit of earthquake activity bouncing back and forth. I wouldn't say a little bit. It's a lot. A lot of earthquake activity. Sometimes I have to correct myself on that because there is a lot of activity underneath this region. So we'll continue to watch it. Uh, that's all we can do right now. There's a couple different scenarios. As the USGS mentioned, we could see an eruption here in this area. Uh, in fact, this area did see some historical data uh, or historical eruptions here in the past. 1974 July area. Um or July 1974 in this area, but they're claiming that it could be roughly around this area or this crater region. So, um, you know, it's I guess it's been a little while since there's been any activity specifically within this region here. And that's where we're seeing that earthquake activity really ramp up, where I believe the magma is uh, trying to break through the surface and eventually could. Uh, but the other scenario is that uh, we could just see a, uh, an intrusion off to the lower east rift zone, potentially. Um, just have to see what happens here. I mean, it's, it's a developing, evolving situation there across Kilauea Volcano. 
And uh, no one knows for sure what's going on, but uh, we'll find out soon enough. All right, earthquake activity, anything big overnight? I know we were looking at a whole bunch of quietness over here across the Western Pacific. Um, we did fill in a little bit here across Japan with a couple fours following all this deeper, this deeper quake yesterday. Getting a little bit of surface adjustment here across the uh, northwestern corner of the Pacific Plate. Same for down here. Uh, this area has seen a fairly deep quake yesterday. It's going to be a 4.8 here. Some surface adjustment going on across the Kermadec Trench, but also a super deep earthquake coming into the Vanuatu area, 636 kilometers deep. Uh, that was followed up by a couple shallow earthquakes up here and then also across the uh, Papua New Guinea area. But remember, Solomon Islands really has not seen any type of uh, uh, movement here in a, quite a while. It's filled in slightly across this area, but uh, I don't believe Solomon Islands has seen anything out here. Let's see here. Let's go back to the last seven days. Yes, yeah, see, look at the seismic gap zone right about here. Santa Cruz Islands uh, to the Solomon Sea, nothing. So we'll uh, definitely watch things out here. We got anything major going on in New Zealand? This was from last night at 5.7 Kermadec Trench. Kermadec Islands area. Let's see. Uh, nothing really across New Zealand here for now. North and South Island look pretty quiet. A little bit of migrational movement here across the Java Trench with a couple fives stirring up there into this area, just uh, southern end of Sumatra, 5.3. Got a handful of earthquakes up here across the Middle East and the, the region in general. Nothing big going on there, just some typical movement. 2.5 out around the Mediterranean, the latest quake. And there's that 5.8 down here across the South Sandwich Trench, southern end. I think it was a couple days ago we've seen some activity at the northern end here. Seen a little bit of movement here, a couple fives. Now we're adjusting accordingly further down south. I suppose we'll probably see the middle section here fill in uh, in the next couple days as well. So at 5.8 there looks to be the largest earthquake so far in the last 24 hours. Uh, second of that is going to be the Kermadec Islands 5.7. All right, let's check out the states here, see what's going on. Southern California, of course, had that 3.3. Well, the, they upgraded it to 3.5. Interesting. Uh, that earthquake there, just west of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, west of Salton City. Uh, looks like a handful of smaller quakes following that 3.5. The rest of the area down here, fairly uh, typical. Mainly smaller microquakes out there. 1.7 there in the Mariloma area right now. Let's see what else we got here as we back out. Bay Area, Northern California shaking a little bit with a 1.8. And a handful of smaller quakes out here across the Delta area. Uh, really nothing major going on in extreme northern California. We've got a new fire out here just outside of Chico. I'm going to uh, jump in the uh, uh, vehicle here in a little bit and go cover that. I'll, I'll be uh, going live out here this afternoon. Huge fire just started breaking out outside of Chico here. I'll, I'll cover that more at the end of this update video, but I'll be out there live getting some video. Uh, 2.5 outside of Eureka, southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust area. Makes it Sounds scary, right? Well, it is scary. That thing is a sleeping giant, and it's best that it sleeps for now. Um, tremor last night was actually fairly minimal. Let's check out the uh, Cascadia Tremor. 31 epicenters here underneath the area of Portland, Oregon, the center portion here of the Cascadia subduction zone underneath this area. Uh, across Yellowstone National Park, I know that made some news and stirred up some super... Eru super volcano eruption fears, but uh, there's nothing really of any uh, major concern with Yellowstone right now. There's really no earthquake activity. If anything, it's over here. One, two, three, maybe four. Very small. Those are probably 0 0.2, 0 0.3. 
and not three, not three in the magnitude, but point three, bare, you know, well below the one magnitude. And that's it. There's really nothing else going on. Looks like some wind stirring up out here. That's a typical reading of wind. And just to verify, let's go show you guys real quick across the windy map. Uh, we'll stir up the wind gusts here and see what we have going on across northwest Wyoming. I would say there's some wind out here. <laughs> Maybe higher across various areas, but we've got gusts around 40 miles an hour or so across Yellowstone National Park. And no doubt that will show up across a lot of stations, including over here across the east entrance. That is not magma movement. That is not, you know, anything aside from wind. All right, uh, what else we got? I got to get going here. So let me cut this short. Uh, Texas area, most of this here from yesterday. We did have a couple more twos after midnight out in the oil fields. Uh, a couple smaller quakes out east. But uh, generally, oh, there's a 5.7 Venezuela area. Southern end here of the Caribbean plate. couple deeper quake well one deep quake here uh, from last night there into the uh, Peru area but uh, looks fairly quiet there across South America as far as anything large goes for now pretty quiet in general there even with the uh, smaller quakes so Hawaii right now we'll continue to watch that one earthquake over here around uh, Taiwan right now coming in just right this second here but USGS not picking up on it yet but it is on the globe here so we'll keep an eye on things let's see if the space weather sites up it is up now they did have a little bit of a issue with the network it looks like here yesterday no major roars in the forecast here folks maybe a g1 class storm as we head to the 27th but i don't think that's going to be anything of any major value uh, no major solar flares here in the last 24 hours and the solar flare threat remains somewhat limited. 10% chance for X flare. M flare at 60. C flare around 99% chance or so. And uh, that's about it. Nothing major coming in. Storm Prediction Center, far as severe weather goes. Well, not a whole lot going on here. Maybe a, a little chance for some wind up there in Montana and Wyoming area, like we're showing you on the windy map. No hail threats, just wind. No tornado threats either. So got some thunderstorms. Some beneficial rain and a little bit of wind out there to rock those wind chimes if you're outside enjoying that thunderstorm like I would be. I mean, it's just as long as you're safe. You don't want to be standing outside underneath the tree. But at the same time, I love opening the windows and listening to a good thunderstorm. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Um, let me show you guys the fire real quick. Which one I'm going to be on. So watch duty map right here uh, there's a big one that just started up here last night look at it it's almost grown to hundred thousand acres 71,489 acres uh, and I'm sure it's more than that well this was updated two minutes ago <clears throat> uh, satellite image based heat is a little scary that's growing quite rapidly and we do have winds here in this area it's supposed to kick up through the afternoon as well look at this live shot uh, this is looking west from uh, Bald Mountain area uh, and unfortunately that fire could be headed up into this area look at that there's a lot of forest up there to burn hopefully they get this uh, handled but it's a big fire producing some large cumulus clouds I'm gonna be out there um, live streaming this here in about an hour or so folks so make sure you look for that uh, this fire is moving off to the north and it does have potential to burn up hill where the heavily forested areas are um chico there's corning uh biggs gridley chico in general is right right here in this area so it started just off 32. someone someone mentioned that i i guess a car went off here and caught fire uh, but either way, that's a, a bad area because we got a south wind today. There's a lot of unburned forests up here. And, you know, that could be this could be a big, big, big one. Already, just overnight, 71,000 acres. It just started yesterday. 
burning up to the north again it has potential to burn up into the mountains further i'll be out there um covering this here today a couple other fires out here as well but this one has really took off in terms of uh, rapid growth this one uh, literally is the top chart uh chart topper out here for now hopefully they get this uh, under control there's evacuation orders here in the red um evacuation warnings here in the yellow that includes uh it looks like it's getting close to red bluff up here there's anderson corning red bluff area goodness all right so we'll catch you guys back out here in a little bit on the live stream secondary live stream uh, to cover this event.